questions for Coach? Okay. Well, Donnie, what, what concerns you? <laughs> what concerns you the most about Michigan? If you can pinpoint one thing, looking at their defense, uh, their players. Uh, they got really good players. You know, defensively, I think what they give up 16 points a game last year. Now that was last year's team. I get that, but they got most of them returning. They they did lose some players, but you know, programs like that, they they just reload. I think they've lost what three games in two years or something like that. So they're they're used to winning. They're used to having success. That means that uh, they're recruiting well. And they just have outstanding talent. I mean, they don't they don't do anything that's so okay. Wow, you know, what what, what scheme is that? They have good schemes. You know, Coach Minner does a great job. He's got NFL experience. He's got a lot of NFL stuff in. But you know, that's not what worries you. What worries you is their defensive line can just explode off the ball and just throw the offensive lineman down and go make the tackle. And then there's like four other guys there when they make the tackle as well. They do a nice job uh, with the interceptions. Uh, a lot of tip balls. I tell you what, you, you better not tip the ball, you know, as a receiver, because they do a great job of breaking off the ball and getting the turnovers and setting the offense up, you know, for success. So, a uh, lot, lot of concerns. Yeah, a lot of concerns. Really, a lot of respect for them. If you're looking for any edge you can get here, is, is one of them that they haven't seen a lot of Mason Garcia, Alex Flynn, and, and this East Carolina offense in particular on film? Well, they have, you know, and, and so that I guess that's something maybe they're trying to research. You know, I don't know that that's a positive for us. That that means our guys haven't been playing very much. You know, it's probably better to have experience uh, like that. But uh, you know, we, we're looking for every way you can. We're looking for any kind of advantage. And you know, you, you go in with a plan uh, that may hold true. Uh, the thing about first games, it's always a little crazy. Anyhow, you're kind of sparring at the beginning, trying to figure out. You know, is that the same team? Like I say, we we opened up with North Carolina State last year. They had been a great defense the year before. We were expecting a really good defense, which they turned out to be. But you're still getting in there trying to figure out, have they stayed with the same scheme? Have they, have they put in new things? Have they moved people around? And usually they have, and, and they had. And I'm sure Michigan will have some new things for us as well like that. So uh, I think our guys will be excited. You know, I think that's maybe an edge. I don't know how – I mean, they'll be excited to play. They're, they're probably not – their fans are probably not thinking, wow, we're playing East Carolina. You know, whereas our fans and our players are here, and hey, y'all are going to play Michigan. This is pretty cool. Uh, so, if anything, hopefully we'll be we'll be excited. Maybe we'll be more excited than them if that's possible. Coach, uh, we tried to get out of Coach Houston who's going to play and who's going to be here and there, and we didn't really succeed in that. So, wow, y'all not very good at this. So, what the heck? <laughs> is there? How does the offense change based on your personnel? You know, the thing about, I know that the depth chart things out there, of course, Michigan's not been given out one, I guess, for years. You know, that's a hardball thing. And I know, you know, once Lord Saban comes out with something like that, then it's going to become a rule, I guess, probably, that you don't do depth charts, you know, like that. So, uh, but the game has changed so much anyhow because everybody's personnel and things now. It looks like a hockey game out there anyhow or side changes or whatever that thing is. So, you know, we have 10 personnel, you have 11 personnel, you have 13 personnel, uh, you, you know, you have 20 personnel, but now even you have 11 Jari, you know, and you have 11 Juice, and you have, okay, I want this personnel, but I want this player in to make sure, you know, or I want to play these two guys, though they may be listed at the same position, because, you know, you're a guard, you're a forward, you're, you're a center, you know, you're an infielder, whatever you are now. It's getting more like that. You're, you're a mid-infielder, you know what I'm saying? Or you're a pitcher, but you might start, you might not start. Everybody's doing multiple things. The game has got a lot more open, a lot more basketball-like, you know, like that. A lot of guys can bring the ball down the court now, you know what I'm saying? So it really is kind of hard to make a depth chart out because you don't know who really deserves to be like, the starter, I guess. And I know that's a big deal. It was a big deal to me. You know, when I was playing, I, it was a big deal to your mom, I guess, probably more than, than you are like that. But now it, it, you'd say, well, who's starting the game? At, at a lot of positions, you'd say, well, where's the ball? What's the score? You know, do we have it on the minus three? You know what I'm saying? Are we starting coming out? Well, that means we're going to be in a different personnel because you got a game plan that. Do we get, did we run the kickoff back across midfield? 
Okay, now we're in a sudden change. You can't coordinate or he might be going to blitz more in that situation. All right, we're in this person. So it's getting like that. Now, you know, the quarterback thing, probably not quite to that extent. Uh, what I think, you know, and Coach is kind of saying is, you know, we know what we're going to do, and you guys know what we're going to do. Uh, we really are prepared to play three quarterbacks. And in a game like this, I'm not saying this is a game it doesn't matter, but I, I, I'm pretty sure John Gilbert got the money up front. Okay, I hope he did anyhow. I'm sure he got the, the money. Okay, so we, we can let this thing roll. You know what I'm saying? We, we can go play to win, which we're always going to play to win the game. But you'd be crazy not to, if you had a chance to do something, you know, play another guy. I mean, who knows? Why can't you play two quarterbacks in the same same thing? Yeah, why not? You know what I'm saying? If there's a play that, that would be cool to do, this is the time to do it. You know, I don't know if it's time to do it when you're playing for the conference championship or the home opener, but this is the time to go do that. Last week you said you were going to get with, I guess, Coach Mogridge and kind of narrow down that offensive yeah. line. How's that gone the last week? And you found a five you're comfortable with? I think we probably separated up front that, that who's going to play the majority. Uh, Coach Mogridge is from the school, and, and I am too, that we'd like to play more offensive linemen. In the past four years since we've been here, it's been do we have five today? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I still remember being in Navy. And we're coming out for the kickoff, and they're saying, hey, uh, by the way, Noah's out. And I said, he's out where? And if we's out of the game, well, what are we going to do now? We, we, ha we have nobody else, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we have to move the left guard over to the right tackle or something like that. We have good depth now as far as numbers. Uh, the strength of our offense probably, and I've said this before, may not be in we got some name guys. We don't have whole mailers, okay, who everybody knows about the scene. We don't have – the little dude that ran all over everybody again, you know, too. We, we don't have some of those names. We don't have CJ. But we've got a lot of different guys, you know what I'm saying? So if one guy's not on that day, we have more options, you know what I'm saying? Now, eventually, I hope somebody starts to separate and becomes a star, like, you know, Isaiah did, you know what I'm saying, like CJ did, like Ryan Jones did. But right now, it's more of we got a bunch of guys, but we got more guys, you know, so we'll practice right now. We're playing more guys. We're working more guys. I hope that keeps us fresher, too, throughout the year. That could be the other advantage. Maybe not necessarily in this game. They're pretty deep, I think. But uh, I think throughout the season it could be. Going off that, it's part of it, too, at this point. You all just have to get out there and almost see who's going to step up in a game situation and kind of ride the high hand, maybe. It, it, that's, that's the whole nerve-wracking part. But I guess, in a way, it's kind of the fun part, too, like I say. You know, it's more fun when you come down and you get that extra Christmas present you didn't know you were getting. So, you know, we're, we're after practicing and guys are doing good, and quarterbacks are looking good, you know, but I'm thinking like, okay, you know, when we do that in a game, it counts. You know what I'm saying? Back in practice is one thing, hitting one out. And hitting one out in a game, that's a little bit different. So the good players usually come to the top. The bigger the situation, the bigger the game, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but – we're getting ready to find out because we're going to get tested just like we did last year, though. I mean, North Carolina State proved to be one of the best defenses in the country, you know, throughout the season. And that was after they lost their quarterback. They didn't do much offensively either. They stepped, you know, kept putting people down. So we'll have another tough challenge like that. You know, we'd love to be playing at home. You know what I'm saying? I wish we were playing here. We're playing up there. But, again, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's going to be a better thing. It'll be fun. Coach, obviously this receiver group is kind of limited in game experience and there's yeah. a lot of new young guys. So as a coordinator, how do you prioritize kind of getting them the experience with the route trees and what they need to do game plan wise while also preparing them for a big opponent? Well, you know, that's what the meetings are for. That's what the practices are for. We try to, we, and you know, because you, you've been there, you really do know how competitive the practices are. And I, I've said this to some of my friends around the country and they look at me like I'm crazy. I say, you know, I'm a lot more nervous sometimes on Wednesday when we're going to go against our defense on third down because it's like brother on brother. You got you got to live with that. Then the next week, who won the third down competition? You know, saying in the game, yeah, they fly their way, we go our way. You don't ever see half of those guys again. So the practices being so competitive, I think they'll get guys ready for the game because everybody's in game mode out there. You know what I'm saying? And uh, smack talking's going on. You, you you know how that is. So I think that's it. And I just think that you know we we just we just practice a lot. You know we really do. We get a lot of reps. And like I say, 
there's a lot of talent in the receiver group. It'll be now who's game ready. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know. I wish that did. Coach, uh, maybe not on the defensive side, but the offensive side, this gigantic stadium and crowd plays a big role. Yeah. And, you know, you've been in some of those environments. Coach mentioned BYU earlier yeah. yesterday. Uh, how did you guys work on getting them ready to go into that? Well, you're right. I think that does affect, obviously, the offense more than it does your defense. You know, a, a program like Michigan, the crowd's pretty educated. They're pretty football savvy. You know, they know when their guys are out there on offense that you don't want it to be so loud that you can't communicate. And then when the defense is out there, they're, they're going to they're gonna ring their bell, whatever they've got, and they're going to try to get the crowd noise going. Uh, we're kind of prepared for that anyhow. We, we, we are kind of a si silent count. But we play this hair band music like throughout practice. Any of you been out there? I mean, it's like 1973 out there. Okay, so Bon Jovi's always blaring, okay, you know, and the you, you can't hardly coach anyhow. Like Joe will tell you, we, we go to inside run or team run, and they can't hardly hear me calling the play anyhow. So you got hand signals and you got all that. So I don't, it can't be any louder than it is when we got that music cranked up out there for the players. So, you know, that, that, I think that's probably, we feel pretty comfortable. You went for it quite a bit on fourth down. We're pretty good on that last year. Yeah. Is that, and you said you might throw everything you got at them this week. Is, is that easier to do when you have Holton and Keaton and Isaiah and CJ? Or do, can you still stay aggressive on fourth downs? Yeah, you know, the, the fourth down thing has is, is become a big deal. And I think the, the analytics, you know, have crept into football the last couple of years. And that's probably where it really started to, to uh, get into the coaches' heads about, well, you know, if he had four downs to get 10 yards, this game would be a lot different, you know, if he, if he would take that mode. And then looking at, well, if you punt from the 38 and he punts it in the end zone, they get it on the 20, you know, what your best chance to win. And, and because it's, it's in writing and it's been proven, you know, with math, okay, you're, if you go for it here and you make it, you increase your chance to win this game. And I think that was a big part of getting coach to say, but, you know, coming from the defense side of the ball, they're like, let's punt them in the hole. Let's keep them down there in the hole. And we'll stop them, and you'll get it back in better field position. And so he kind of came around that way. It, it, it changes the deal because it really makes the way you call third down like it's second down if you take that mode. Now, a lot of that's affected by your field goal kicker. What's his range? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if he's got long range, he, he obviously you're going to kick some field goals. If not, you're going to go for it a little bit more. So I think we're going to be in that mode anyhow. Now, it's always dictated by what's the score of the game, okay, how much time's left, and then really what type of a game it is because, you know, when, when you've been in this business, you know, and y'all been around it enough and seen enough games, there are some games you, you go out, you, you may think, wow, this is going to be a low-scoring game. You go, like, dang, what happened? You know, everybody started going for it, everybody let it go, I don't know, it turns into a shootout. But then there's other times you think, wow, the, the line says this is going to be a high-scoring game, and the defense is dictating. Sometimes it's weather, you know, a little bit. Uh, so it kind of you – know, coach gets a good feel. He, he's got good instincts. I think one of his number one reasons for success is he has good instincts. And he knows when to go for a fake punt. You know what I'm saying? He knows when to call a fake field goal. I think he knows when to go for it on fourth. I think he knows our defense is in good shape right now. We could take a little chance here, and if they get it at the 35 – they're probably still going to be okay. We don't have to punt them in the hole or vice versa. Or, hey, you know, today don't look like that kind of day. You know what I'm saying? It looks like you, you, you better maybe punt them in the hole. And that's why he makes the big bucks, so he has to make that decision. I just have a play ready. And that's the way we, we have an agreement. I'm going to call play, and he's going to say no. Okay? But if you wait, time will run out. You know what I'm saying? So even like a two-minute offense, I'll be calling plays, and he might be saying, no, we're calling timeout. But, you know, I can't wait to say, are you going to call timeout here or am I going to call a play? Because you've like wasted five seconds. So I'll always have a list of fourth down plays ready to go. I'll always want to go because I don't feel like I got as much to lose probably. Now, I'm not sure Blake's not giving me a little evil eye over there sometimes. But uh, I think it all balances itself out. Anything else, Coach? <clears throat> Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you.